Welcome to the annual Alify Rendezvous, where we're going to meet some great people, experience some great trades, and eat some great food. Let's go back in history and encounter. rendezvous on a Friday afternoon. It was quite windy, but not cold, which is typical during this annual event. We were greeted by President Frontiersman Ron Clark and had a chance to interview him. Welcome, we have the treat of running into Ron Clark, who is the president of the Florida's Frontiersmen organization, and he's gonna tell us all about where we are today. Well, you're in Homeland, Florida, <laughs> but what this is the Alafia River Rendezvous. It's okay. a, what it represents is a pre-1840 uh, event that happened out in the Rockies. Mm -hmm. The end of the, the uh, beaver trade with the trappers that would take their furs and stuff in and they would set up a rendezvous where they'd all meet and trade their goods, the furs for goods to take back to the, like gunpowder, guns, knives, food, whatever mm -hmm. they needed to do and they'd gather for a trading event. Wonderful. So that was back in the 1840s. 1840s, okay. This event spans from 1640, which is like the start of the French and Indian War, to okay. the 1840s. But Wonderful. it ends in 1840. That's when we cut off our time with that. Casey Fletcher from the Florida Frontiers Men's Organization, and he's just an active participant that's gonna tell us a lot about the place. Well, this is an exciting event. We uh, hold it uh, once a year in January. It's the largest in the country. Uh, I think there are two keys to our success. One is it is in January in Florida. Yeah, So the uh, a lot of people, there. we have people from all over the country attending, including from Canada. Mm -hmm. We've had people from England attend wow. before in, in, okay. in Alaska. Uh, and it is a very exciting event as a participant uh, because I have now another group of friends and this is the only way I know them mm -hmm. and the only time I see them. Uh, the other important element is, is since we're reenacting a, a historical period uh, back pre-1840 is that there's a tremendous opportunity to share and spread knowledge of the skills and, sure. and, and the arts that, um, that the people that they did. Did you know that they take this right here yeah. and they turn it into clothing to get the clothing hanging over there? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's how it turned into clothing. Uh -huh. Do you feel it? Yeah, it's so fluffy. So fluffy. Now, when did you start this organization? Well, the, this particular Alify River Rendezvous was started 47 years ago up in Hudson, uh, Hudson, Florida. Okay. There never was by the Alify River until several years later, 1985. But it was called that because of the Alify River Long Rifles. Wow, that's interesting. So this is an amazing event, and it's huge. Um, has it always been this big? Or? No, it's grown over the years. Uh, okay. our, Florida Frontiers Monique took this over in 1985 mm -hmm. uh, because the other club went defunct and we held it in Keysville, Florida for a number of years there and it's grown from about 160 camps to about 1400 participants now. People wow. come from all over the United States have been coming for years to this so it's like a once a time reunion to meet each other again. Well, 
on uh, Thursdays of uh, each rendezvous, we have probably about 2,000 school children come in wow, in different groups wonderful. and give them tours and very specific demonstrations mm -hmm. uh, so that they can learn something about right, these skills. Great so education going on. So absol wonderful. Absolutely. This is now the largest one in the country. Okay. So uh, a lot of people here that have a lot of goods and wares and just camp together. So. Okay. Now, if people were coming, what would they expect? During the week, it's closed to outside visitors, so we have our own classes and stuff. But during the okay. weekend, when we open to the visitors, you'll see vendors who've come down and bring their trade goods, just like in the pre-1840s. So you'll find some uh, raw materials to make your own craft wear, moccasins and stuff. Okay. Or you'll also see where there's tailored clothes that were fashionable at that period of time. Mm -hmm. And there's root beer, there's all kinds of stands. During the event, when it's when uh, when we're just participating in the event during the week, there's something like 1,500 campsites or 1,500 adults, maybe 300 kids, okay. young 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 children coming. Mm -hmm. It's open to the public on Fridays and Saturdays. Usually on Friday, we'll have 15,000, uh, excuse me, 1,500 uh, okay. visitors. Saturday may okay. go from 5,000 to 7,500. Just just dependent like on the weather. If it rains, we won't have a lot of people. Weather, yeah. or just, uh, and then depending on what else is going on in the community. Uh, but this is about our 15th year on this site. It was a hard life, and so there were uh, uh, many skills. They had to make everything, clothing, sure. feed, and, uh, feed themselves. And out here demonstrated just a wide variety of different skills. Uh, Pottery, gunsmiths, clothing, uh, coopers, coppersmiths, silversmiths, uh, gun makers. Hank Steinmetz is a blacksmith with Black Smoke Forge. The carts contain bellows set on wheels, which allow the blacksmith to take his cart with him. He uses a self made forge cart similar to one that would have been used in the 18th century. Steinmetz traveled from Greenville, Ohio to participate in the rendezvous. His camp, Blacksmith Forge, sells utilities made from iron. To get to see, we have seminars set up. Different Florida frontiersmen and other people. There's blacksmiths, there's okay. pottery makers, there's spinners. Uh, just discussion on different trades and stuff of the pre-1840 and the history that goes with it. Glenn McLean is a broom maker, among other hand maker crafts such as walking sticks, canes, and jewelry. This is a piece of sorghum. It's actually the tassel of a sorghum plant, grown specifically for making brooms. Glenn McLean lives in Midhurst, Ontario from April to October. He uses sorghum to make his brooms. By about 1810, the sorghum used in brooms had acquired a new name, broom corn, as the British called all seed-bearing plants corn. The sorghum also looks similar to the sweet corn plant, and its tassels have become the broom material still used in quality brooms today. Brooms were not only used to sweep the house, but also the yard so that vermin could not cross that open area. The term going off the handle came from this type of broom. When mom was swinging the broom at misbehaved children, the broom head would sometimes fly off the stick. Brooms are also dyed several different colors. The brooms are capped to enhance the look and the open ends were covered on top. There are very few broom makers in the US. There used to be thousands of acres of broom corn in the U.S. Now it comes from Mexico. The club itself is a 501c3, and we've okay. been in existence, like I say, since actually 1972, found in St. Petersburg. 
So this is the one. This is our fundraiser. Okay. This is our car wash and our bake sale. If we want to go rendezvous, we go somewhere else. The rest of us are volunteers. We own this property, and that's probably another reason we're successful is that we can develop it um, and uh, put up the stockades. The things that you see in the background have shooting ranges, and it's a permanent site. Sure. <laughs> in there, yeah. now it's ready to shoot. <laughs> we meet here every month and we don't dress like this, but we sure. practice the crafts of the old days. We do muzzle loading competition, wow. we do archery, hawk and knife, and then we hold historical seminars mm -hmm. and we camp here as, as members. And then we do an outreach where we take our knowledge and our skills to other events or other mm -hmm. communities. Club has about 200 people. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of institutional memory in the club, so mm -hmm. that makes for a very well-run event. Next, we visited the Thorntons, and as the young girl shared sugarcane with Eden, we gave it to you. Uh, it did. <laughs> that girl. The couple shared with us about their Black Seminole heritage in Florida. Meet friends, and then like, see, they all we just got them a wagon. They'll go and they'll work and take out people's garbage and get water and all that kind of stuff. So it's so good for them because you can't get this in a history book. This is, this is. The warmth of their friendliness was so inviting, it made me want to stay and share in their tradition. I can see why so many people love to be a part of this. The fire has been interesting this year. Um, we have really been working on our skills for starting wood, real wood fires and so um, and then, of course, our campfire, where we spend time and just kind of stay warm at night. We had some pine trees in our yard that went down and we used that. My husband made some um, what's called lighter wood or fat wood to start your fire. Lighter wood is when, a, when the turpentine in a pine tree uh, kind of gels back into the center of the wood. And so it has a lot more rosin and a lot more of the uh, ter concentrated turpentine. So when you burn one of these, these burn almost just like any type of uh, uh, gasoline soaked wood. It's very, uh, it burns very easy and it burns very bright. Make it available on our trade blanket for anybody who's having trouble with their fire. Many of the blacks serve as interpreters for the Seminole Indian. And so they would travel with the Seminole Indians when they went to Washington DC to negotiate for peace. They would give them some type of trinkets the French typically gave a, a brass gorget. A typical Seminole dress um, with bangle jewelry. Um, well, this is our camp. Um, we have basically our fly, which kind of serves as our front porch area. Our table where we have our dinner, everything is wood um, to give that unique feel, time period correctness. We heard all about how they use their kitchen, their sleeping quarters, and the history behind their clothing. One of the unique things about the Alify Rendezvous, we focus this year on Florida history. One thing that we learned that uh, America doesn't necessarily do a good job at is talking about the history of Florida. But Florida was uh, the first area discovered in the United States uh, by um, the Spaniards. The richness of American history and the many different groups that were brought to Florida, such as the Africans uh, and the Spaniards, and as well as the the French and uh, and so Florida history is just such a rich history. One of the great things I'm learning now is that there are many professors in universities now that are rediscovering and restudying Florida history. Uh, individuals like Dr. Uh, J. Michael Francis. Florida was kind of the epic center of what went on in the United States. 
we camped for about 10 days but this is our third year and I will say that the people out here are amazing they're friendly they're welcoming it's like a whole different set of family to have um, and each year it's been something new we have new vendors new reenactors um, so even if you've done it before there's always something new so come on back out and see us A redhead <gasps> staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Is your family in need of more quality time together? Dr. Spruce. Nature is best enjoyed together. So bring the whole family to discover all the bonding and stress reducing benefits parks and forests have to offer. Visit discovertheforest.org and trade in phone time for family time. Birds, squirrels, chipmunks, grass, worms, bugs, trees, rocks, and other objects in nature cannot talk. If you'd like to have a conversation while visiting nature, you will need to bring humans along. We strongly recommend starting with your family. Hey, let's check out this park. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Find fun activities to do, like boating and biking, or camping and hiking, plus much more. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Planning the right amount of food is hard. The guesstimator makes it easy. Just tell it who's coming and what's for dinner. Then it tells you how much to make. And yes, it even plans for leftovers. Try it at savethefood.com. Can you, can you try to get a fishy for me? Okay, we're gonna put it here. Okay, and you try to catch that fish for me. Are all kid powered. Here you go. Yay! Yeah. This is Eden, and she is a shopper here at Mr. Mommy's Toy Emporium. And she is going to play with some games that the kids would have played with 
back in the 1700s. Do you know what this is? You are at Mr. Monty's Toy Emporium. We sell the historical toys that the kids would have played with. Lots of fun. See lots of neat things. We have little umbrellas that the girls would have played with. Turn around and show him your face, how, how that makes you feel. Yeah. And of course, we have the warrior side for anybody who feels to be like a warrior. Sure. Wooden swords, handmade right here in Homeland. We have the guns. We have lots of furs and just all kinds of toys from ages zero to however old, 80 years old. instrument from the 1800s. It was brought to our country by the immigrants that came to our country. And it, the first one they had was called a shy hole, which was, an, it was a different shaped instrument. But they moved to the Appalachian Mountains and the people from the Appalachian Mountains reworked it and they made their own shape of the instrument, which is the shape that you see here. And they played um, the instrument with a chicken feather. the Conestoga wagon was ever documented was in 1718. It was by James Logan who was secretary of William Penn. He started the Indian trade going down to the uh, Conestoga area. The Conestogas were an Iroquoian tribe who uh, lived down in the, off the Susquehanna River and they became the protectors of some of the other tribes moving in, the Shawnee, the Delaware, the Nanachokes. The Conestoga wagon was a farm wagon that was developed in that region. That region now is known as Lancaster, Pennsylvania. The Mennonites and the Amish, they built these wagons and that's what they were using up until about the first national road around the end of the 1790s. But there's some features on this wagon that tell me it's a Conestoga. This was a freight wagon. Nobody rode in this wagon. The jack is on this. He'd jack it up, reach under here, and he'd take out the grease bucket and he'd grease the wheels. Hubs, wheels, just like we call them the tires today. This wagon would hold about a 2,000 pounds. The big ones would hold six ton. So this would take two horses to pull it. The other wagon would take, the big wagon would take six horses, specially bred horses known as the Conestoga horses, which are now extinct. We do an outreach where we take our knowledge and our skills to other events or other mm -hmm. communities. And we also participate like at Fort King and places like that. So we, we try to get out and we also do a, a scholarship for the people, uh, for the kids in uh, Bartow and Fort Meade okay. who have welcomed us to this community. That's wonderful. Club membership is a family membership. It's not very expensive. You come out here and there's plenty of things to buy. There's restaurants, there's plenty mm -hmm. of food. It is a hobby where you can spend just as much money as you want to. Mm -hmm. 
very first horn cup. I've made hundreds of them since then. But uh, this is a horn cup. It's my oh, bow, I'm a boyer, hatchet and a jack. Now people, um, if they're hungry, can get food. And Absolutely. There's like homemade food being made as yeah. well as others? Or? I recommend the Indian fry bread. Okay. It is a place to start, Indian fry, uh, Indian fry bread. But there's any number of restaurants out here with quite a variety of food. Okay. One place sells elk and bison burgers. So. Nice. I guess so, I'll be checking out well, some food in a little bit. We've had a great day here at Alethea Rendezvous. I'm enjoying my last few minutes eating some great food. This here is the fried taco, and I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Encounter. Hi, I'm Peter, and there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything! That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, mm. the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Wow. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. No. <laughs> Are we there yet? Yep. We're here. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org.